Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you again uh, to the insurance commissioners for the invitation to join you. Uh, I'm going to talk about climate change in the American mind. But let me give you, first of all, a little bit of background about who we are and what we do at the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication. So we study how do Americans and other people around the world respond to the issue of climate change? What do people understand and misunderstand about the causes, consequences, and solutions to climate change? How do they perceive the risks, so the likelihood and severity of different types of impacts from health impacts to wildfires, floods, storms? Uh, what kinds of policies do people support or oppose? And then what kinds of behaviors are people engaged in around climate change and clean energy, which can be everything from acts that they take themselves to try to reduce their own uh, contributions to climate change, so their own carbon pollution uh, emissions, but also, of course, to what extent are they adapting or preparing for these types of impacts, of which insurance is actually a really critical piece, obviously. Um, then as academics, our ultimate question is answering why. What are the underlying psychological, cultural, political reasons why some people get really engaged with this issue, others are kind of apathetic, and some are downright dismissive and hostile, or at least they are in the United States. That's not generally true in much of the rest of the world. So what I'm going to show here is really focusing in on the United States, uh, and we've been doing for now 15 years uh, a study that we call Climate Change in the American Mind, where we do two nationally representative surveys every year, every spring, every fall, every spring, every fall, and have been doing that since 2008. So I'm just going to draw on just a few quick things here, a few uh, key insights. Uh, that I'll share with you here, but please know there's a lot more here. And so I encourage you to come visit our website at the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication, where we make all of this kind of data freely available. So with that background in mind, I'm going to show you the trend lines of how Americans have been, their views have been changing about some of the core fundamental facts about climate change. So starting off with, do Americans think that climate change is happening? And what you see here is that back in the fall of 2008, when we first started, 71% uh, of Americans thought that climate change was real. So that was kind of a high water mark at the time. We then saw a huge 14 percentage point drop bottoming out in about 2010. This was really driven by the politics of that time period. And since then, it's been slowly, slowly, slowly working its way back up till we just last um, fall. Uh, that 76 percent was an all-time high it dropped a little bit in last april that's the most recent data point here uh, but still we're at basically an all-time high again of americans that think climate change is happening which is good news however just to put that in a little bit of global context if we were in japan this number would be over 95 percent so it's not to say that uh, the u.s really is leading the world on this there's still a fair number of people who either think it's just not happening at all or are just uncertain, they just don't know. So there's still some important uh, communication that needs to be done in just helping people understand that yes, this is a real problem. And moreover, a, a relatively smaller uh, majority understands that it's mostly human cause. So as of last April, uh, that that's the data point on the far right, uh, only 56% of Americans understand that it's caused mostly by human activities. In fact, it's entirely caused by human activities. Um, but you've still got about 33% of Americans who think that it's natural. And this is an important misunderstanding because if it's just natural, then many people conclude that therefore we didn't have anything to do with it and we can't do much about it other than perhaps, you know, prepare ourselves for some impacts. But, you know, it gets warmer, it gets colder, so it'll all work its way out. Uh, I mean, if only it was that simple, unfortunately, that's just not the case. The world is warming. It's warming because of human uh, burning of fossil fuels and some land use change. And unfortunately, it's going to get much warmer uh, in the future. So we do need to be getting prepared uh, uh, right now. OK, so there's still some important communications just around the fact that this is human caused. And one of the other things that we've been tracking over all these years is people's level of worry. And I'm going to show you some other risk perception related items because that, of course, is central to people buying insurance. You buy insurance because you perceive that you are at risk of something, you know, losing your home or, you know, having a fire at your in your home or, or you know, getting in an accident with your car. Well, that's the same basic way that we think about these big issues like climate change as well. And so what we see here is that while worry overall has been increasing over the years, um, still, even as of last April, only 30% of Americans say that they're very worried about this issue. So why is that? Well, one of the main reasons that we've seen for years is this, is that 
while nearly half of Americans think that they will be harmed by global warming, and that's what you see here on the far left, in other words, how much do you think global warming will harm you personally? Um, but still, it's only 17% who think that they will be harmed a great deal. But you can see that as you get more and more distant from one's own experience, in other words, will your family be harmed a little bit more, people in your community a little bit more, people in the United States, some more, people in developing countries, yes, the world's poor, yes, plant and animal species and future generations of people, that's when you start getting clear majorities uh, of Americans thinking that they will be harmed. And that's really the fundamental point that we still see many, many people in the United States and elsewhere around the world who still believe that climate change is distant. Distant in time, that the impacts won't be felt for a generation or more, so future generations, or distant in space. This is about polar bears or developing countries, but not the United States, not my state, not my community, not my friends, not my family, and not me. And that leads to psychological distance. It just becomes one of a hundred other issues that, that's out there. People don't quite yet understand why this is so important, why it's so urgent that we take action immediately to start reducing carbon pollution. So just to say, this is really at the heart of the kind of communications that you're likely to be doing with your customers and your peers. That said, we are beginning to see, just beginning to see some real changes in the way Americans are thinking about climate change impacting us, whereas that they increasingly think global warming is affecting weather in the United States. And in fact, here you can see in the six month period between spring of 2021 and fall of 2021, we saw a 12 percentage point increase, a big jump, one of the biggest we've ever seen in this record of people saying that climate change is affecting weather in the United States. Now, that shouldn't be a surprise because, of course, last year was a really brutal year of climate impacts, which frankly felt followed on the heels of 2020, which also was a really bad year. But what's also new, and of course, let's just say 2022 has also been a pretty bad year uh, of climate impacts as well, or climate related impacts. Um, but the other thing that is changing is that uh, the media has increasingly begun to use the words climate change in those stories about those extreme weather events, which is really important. Most people do not automatically associate these extreme weather events with climate change. And so it's really, really important that journalists, that leaders, that companies um, help their audiences connect those dots to understand where it's scientifically correct that climate change is making these types of events both more frequent and more severe, ultimately leading to all of us being at greater and greater risk, which again, insurance is one of the primary ways that our society has helped uh, protect us against those kinds of risks. So last thing to say here is that, yes, we saw this big 12-point jump, but it was only up to 43%. So we still have a long way to go before Americans understand that climate change is, in fact, right here, right now, affecting weather in the United States as we speak. Um, likewise, a majority of Americans for the very first time last fall said that global warming was harming people in the United States, so kind of crossing that 50% threshold. And likewise, for the first time, over half of Americans say that they have personally experienced the effects of global warming. So again, that was a 10 point jump, um, but just over half, okay? So it's just to say that this is beginning to shift, um, but there's still much more work to be done here in the United States to help people understand that climate change is here and it's now. And then here's a question that we asked last April uh, for the very first time. And what we found, I frankly find this quite amazing, that 13% of Americans say that they have considered moving to avoid the impacts of global warming. I'm really kind of stunned at that high. Um, and it's just to say, this is just a dawning conversation that is beginning to emerge in American society is how are we in fact vulnerable? How are we at risk, especially given where people live and of course, as these impacts now occur, and we've just seen this with Hurricane Ian in Florida, people are now confronting this really fundamental question. Do we rebuild? Do we stay where we are? Or should we be thinking about moving somewhere else? So just to say, this is, I think, going to be a really interesting number to track over time uh, and to see, do we start seeing a lot more people uh, essentially voting with their feet? Okay, so the next thing I want to quickly uh, 
introduce people to is what we call the Yale Climate Opinion Maps. These are interactive online tools. You can find them on our website, freely available. Um, but it's really to try to answer what's going on within the United States. So for many years, we got asked by people who would see our national numbers and say, hey, these are great. They're really helpful. You know, uh, thanks for doing these. But, you know, I'm doing, uh, you know, I'm running a company in Wichita, Kansas. What can you tell me about my potential market here in Wichita? And the answer was I couldn't tell you anything because no one had ever given us the resources to go out and do survey studies in every single community in America. That would be very expensive. So in response, we've developed and helped pioneer this new technique that allows us to take all this national data, build a model that very accurately can estimate the level of public engagement for all 50 states, all 435 congressional districts, the thousand largest cities, 3000 plus counties across America. We've even gotten this down to the census tract level. So essentially the neighborhood scale. So let me show you what do I mean by that. So here's generally what you would see from a national survey. 65% of Americans are worried about global warming. And again, that's helpful, um, but not very helpful if you're looking at a particular market in a particular place. So here's what it looks like when you take this same question and now look at it by county. And what you can see is that there's in fact a lot of variation. So basically counties that are colored darker in red are a higher proportion of that population is worried about climate change. Darker in blue is where they are a smaller proportion uh, of that population is worried about global warming. And so again, you can see that there's actually a lot of variation across the country. This is a complex country. Um, so one is you see all that variation, but it also reveals all kinds of patterns that you might not otherwise expect. So let me just take one example, and that's the state of Texas. In many people's kind of uh, you know stereotype, uh, you know, we're, it's a you know oil state. It's a Republican state. It's a very conservative state. Often has been led by climate denying governors. Seems like the last place you could have a constructive conversation about climate change. Turns out that's just not true. Uh, and in fact, if you look at those border counties uh, right along the Mexican border, uh, they are more worried about climate change than most of the counties in left liberal California. Okay, huh? Why is that? Well, it actually aligns with the, much of our other work, which has also found that there's this common wisdom that climate change is an issue that only white, well-educated, latte-sipping liberals care about. Turns out that's not true either. The demographic that's the most concerned about climate change are Latinos. They're more convinced it's happening, that it's human caused. They're more worried about it. They're more supportive of action. They're more eager to do something personally to address this issue. Okay. So that's what you're seeing right there is that that impact of this high uh, concentration of, of Latino citizens and, and people. So it's just to say that once you start to unpack these national numbers, you find a lot more uh, you know, detail and important uh, nuance that really tells you much more about different locations as well as different populations within those locations. Okay, so now just to reinforce the point I was making earlier about how many people still see this as a distant problem, here's the map on people who think global warming will affect plants and animals in the future. And overwhelmingly, a majority of people in every single county in America think, yes, it will harm plants and animals. So plants, penguins, and polar bears, not people. Okay, how about people in the United States? Eh, not so much. How about you personally? much less, okay? And that again is, and of course, this is not an act, this is a perception map. This isn't a reality map. The reality is that every single corner and, and location in the United States is feeling the impacts of climate change already, whether it's subtle or whether it's like an extreme uh, event, like a disaster or a flood or a fire or whatever. So it's just to say that there's a big gap here between what how people currently perceive the risks of this issue and thus what they're motivated to do to protect themselves and the reality of this issue, which unfortunately is getting more frequent and more severe every year. Um, and here, this is basically showing you the same kind of a thing, but here's that percentage of people who say that they have personally experienced the effects of global warming. You see a basically a very large sea of blue that many people do not think that they are personally experiencing this, which is kind of reinforcing the point I was making uh, just a moment ago. Okay, the other thing to really uh, 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 emphasize is then that Americans don't have a single viewpoint on climate change. Too often people then think, well, there's just climate believers and climate deniers. 
but that's way too simplistic. Uh, and in fact, over 15 years ago, we identified what we call global warming six Americas, six distinct audiences within the United States that each respond to this issue in a very different way. And one of the first rules of effective communication, education, marketing is know your audience. Who are they? What do they know? What do they think they know? Who do they trust? Where do they get their news and information? What are their underlying values? It's only once you understand who that critical audience is that you can then meet them where they are, not where you are, okay? How do you then engage them on this issue based on where they are and the next step that they're ready to take in their own journey to understanding the importance of this issue? So these six different Americas we've been uh, studying and tracking and, and uh, learning about for now 15 years. There's much, much more available on our, our website, but I'll just quickly introduce you to them. The first is a group that we call the alarm. That's 33% of Americans as of last fall. Uh, these are people who are firmly convinced climate change is happening, it's human caused, it's serious, it's urgent. Um, they strongly support action. But the big question in their mind is what can we do? What can I do as an individual? And what can we do collectively as communities, as cities, as states, as the nation, and yes, even as the world? So we've done a really good job helping them understand why this is such an important issue, but what they what we have not yet given them is the steps, the actions, the solutions to this problem. And so I would just say for this particular group, they're highly motivated to take action, including, I would think, to be particularly interested in questions around uh, insurance and risk mitigation, um, but they just don't yet know what to do. Next comes a group we call the concerned. 25% uh, of the country. These are people who are also convinced it's happening, it's human caused and serious, but they still tend to think of those impacts as distant in time and space. So while they do support action, they don't yet really understand why this is urgent, why this should be a really high priority. So for them, it's really, again, the key uh, theme is that they need to understand that climate change is happening right here, right now and affecting the people, places and things we care about. Then in the middle is a group we call the cautious, 17%. And these are people that are still on the fence. Is it real? Is it not? Is it human? Is it natural? Is it serious? Is it kind of overblown? They're paying attention, but are basically still kind of confused. Then a small, but I think an important group that we call the disengaged at 5% of the country. And these are people who say, you know, I think I once heard that term global warming, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what causes, what the causes are, what the consequences are, what the solutions are. So for them, it's really just lack of awareness. It's not a political or ideological barrier. It's really that they just almost never hear about this issue, either from their friends and family and coworkers or in the media that they pay attention to. Then a group that we call the disengaged, I'm, I'm sorry, the doubtful at 10%. These are people who think, I don't think climate change is real, but if it is, it's just natural, just natural cycles. So nothing we have anything to do with, nothing we can do much about. So they just don't see it as much of a risk. And then last but not least is a group we call the dismissive at 9%. And these are people who are firmly convinced it's not happening, it's not human caused, it's not a serious problem. And many of whom quite literally tell us that they're conspiracy theorists. They say it's a hoax, it's scientists making up data, it's a UN plot to take away American sovereignty, it's a get rich scheme by Al Gore and his friends, and many other such type of conspiracy narratives. Now, critically, they're 9%. They're only 9%, but they're a really loud 9%. They're really vocal 9%, and they've tended to dominate the public square to such an extent that most of the other 91% of Americans are actually kind of afraid of talking about climate change because they're afraid that that person that they might be talking to might be one of these dismissive, and they're going to find themselves in an argument or in, in a, some sort of a political fight. Um, but of course, 91% of Americans are actually quite willing to have a constructive conversation about climate change. And in fact, when you really look at it, that 9%, it's actually just a tiny, tiny proportion of that 9% that are actually active on social media or actually you know, making phone calls or, or raising their voice. So I'm not kidding when I'm saying that we actually are letting the last hair on the tail of the dog wag the entire dog when it comes to the conversation about climate change. And this is really critical. We have to talk about it. We talk about those issues that are important to us. We talk about those risks that are important to us. We just have all gone through the, pan the COVID pandemic 
we talked about it over and over again because it was such an ever present and urgent thing to, to, to deal with. We have to have that same kind of conversation around climate change. And then just what are the trends? So here we're looking at the past six years of uh, how those different six Americas have been changing in proportion to one another. And what you can very quickly see is that the big trend is that overall public opinion is moving increasingly towards the alarmed end of the spectrum. So the alarmed themselves have increased by 22 percentage points over that time period, and all the others basically have been moving up uh, in that direction. And also importantly note that back in 2015, the alarmed and the dismissive were basically tied. So uh, for every one alarmed at 11%, there was one dismissive at 12%. But today, the alarmed outnumber the dismissive more than three to one. That reflects a fundamental shift in the underlying social, cultural, and political climate of climate change. Okay, And it's why we're beginning to see much more ambitious climate policies and programs and implementation beginning to roll out at every level of American society, from obviously the federal level, but also the state and local levels as well. Um, people are beginning to demand more of this kind of action. And I think the trend line does look like it's moving uh, very clearly towards uh, the alarmed end of the spectrum. So just to conclude, a few just basic recommendations. One, it's just important that we talk about it, and especially for those of you who are literally left holding the bag when these impacts happen, right? Uh, I mean, your industry has been on the forefront of this issue as an industry compared to most others, I mean, literally going back decades, but it's really important that you find new ways to talk to your shareholders, to your peers, to your customers, uh, to your employees about this particular issue, because unfortunately, it is going to make life much harder for your industry. Um, secondly, though, is know your audience. People don't all come to this issue from the same starting point. The Six Americas is one really useful framework to be thinking about of, you know, who is that audience? To, if I'm trying to provide insurance to, I don't know, farmers, farmers aren't all the same, right? There are some farmers that are already alarmed about climate change. There are others that are concerned or cautious or disengaged or doubtful or dismissive. You know, how can you better meet each of those different uh, segments of your audience uh, appropriately uh, to, to engage them in this conversation. And then last, and just kind of fundamentally, it's really important to communicate about the growing risks of climate impacts, and that insurance is one of the solutions we have to help us mitigate those risks. So with that, thank you very much. Again, all of our materials are freely available, so come visit us on our website, Yale Program on Climate Change Communications, and uh, thank you very much.